one man is rewriting the rules and taking it to another level. And the next level and the next level. <laughs> the seventh level. You just feel how natural it is. You feel how open you become to your prospects. And in response, they usually become more open to you. Founded by Jeremy Miner, Seventh Level is the only friction-free sales system guaranteed to raise revenue. In my life, it's been revolutionary. And his followers are feeling the difference. His training has transformed everything. It is precise, and it really draws out emotions people around the world are starting to catch on we're going to tie in the new model of selling to your product or service that you sell these tools can work for anyone in any industry at any time and it's time to get on board before the ship sets sail it's seventh level with jeremy minor All right, Jeremy Miner, we are live. Let me go ahead and hit the Instagram phone. We got the Instagram phone here going. Let's go ahead and hit the let's hit the IG or the uh, TikTok phone. Put that right here. Just yeah, flip that around, Nick. Thank you, sir. All right, so we are live today. Now, every Tuesday, if you just joined our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, because we're going live here, going live on many different platforms. We're going live. First of all, we're live on the tick, we're live on the IG phone. I get the IG phone and the TikTok phone confused. So we're live on the TikTok phone. Got about a hundred some thousand of you following me over there on TikTok. We're going live here on Instagram, the Instagram phone. We've got about close to six hundred thousand of you on Instagram following me around from Reels crazy. Two years ago, I didn't even have an Instagram account. We're also going live here on my desktop uh, using StreamYard. So going live in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, about 99,000 of you, about to hit 100,000 in that Facebook group, going live here on the Facebook business page, 160 some thousand of you on that bad boy. LinkedIn, YouTube, love YouTube now. We're putting a lot of time and effort into YouTube. Now we're going to go live. We're going to go about 30 minutes. And today, here's what I'm going to ask you. Well, I'm going to help you. I'm being, I'm being nice. How many of you get prospects that give you a lot of, I want to think it over objections. I want to do more research objections. I want to keep looking around objections and I want to talk with other company objections. Type in me. If you get a lot of, I want to think it over. I want to keep looking around. I want to compare prices. I want to do more research objections. If you get any of those objections and you get them regularly, I want you to type in me in the comments, whatever platform you are on right now. Even if you're on TikTok, uh, type in me, Instagram, Facebook group, YouTube, all that stuff, LinkedIn, type in me. Now, the question is why? Because your prospects have problems and or emotional needs. Am I right? And your solution solves those. So if your prospects have problems and or emotional needs and your solution solves those, what's the missing link? Why are they not buying from you? Okay. I'm going to show you the reason why you're getting those objections. And then I'm going to show you how to prevent most of those objections from happening in your prospect's brain. Okay. Type in me if you want to learn how to prevent those objections. Now, I'm not saying you're going to prevent 100% of the time, but if I can show you how to prevent it 70%, would you make more sales? I'm assuming you would. And even if they have those objections at the end, which very few will, it's much easier to help them overcome it because you've built a bigger gap. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Okay, now, if you are brand new, let's say you just started following me in the Facebook group Sales Revolution, or you started following me on the Facebook business page or YouTube or LinkedIn, or maybe you started following me on Instagram or even TikTok over here, Jeremy Miner, in case you didn't know who I was. So our company, Seventh Level, we are a sales training organization and we train people exactly like you. So we train sales people like you. We train sales professionals like you. We train sales executives, sales leadership, sales management, coaches, consultants, 
entrepreneurs, business owners, and we train you and your teams how to learn specific questions and techniques that work with human behavior rather than work against it. Do you 100% understand what I mean when I say work with human behavior rather than work against it? Because if you're not 100% sure what I mean, that means you're losing a lot of sales that our clients who are in your same industry are making every single day. Pretty much easy. Okay. So write this down. So well, that's called NEPQ. That stands for Neuro Emotional Persuasion Questions. Now, not only are we going to train you the right questions, but we have to train you the right way to ask the questions. There are certain questions that are going to require more of a curious tone. There's other questions that are going to require more of a confused tone. I, I'm not understanding. How do you mean by stress? See, that's a confused tone. There's other questions you're going to have to learn that require more of a challenging or skeptical tone. And then there's other questions that require more of a, a concern tone, a tone that shows more empathy. And then there's other questions where you have to learn how to ask in a playful tone to open them up emotionally. So we're going to show you the differences and why. OK, so today what I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you access. I said five to seven. I'm actually going to give you 10 because I was feeling nice. I'm going to give you 10 what are called any PQ consequence questions that will help your prospect build a massive urgency for them to buy now, not keep pushing it down the road. You see, in my uh, when I was in sales like you, like I guess we're all in sales, right? Sales training company. We're in sales, too. But when I was a rep like you. OK, I had a, almost an 18 year career, 17 and a half years. I sold in four completely different industries, two business to consumer and two business to business. Thanks for the hat on TikTok. I love that. Thank you. That's actually a real good hat. Now, in those industries, I had to learn how to build massive urgency, not by discounts or, oh, if you don't do it today, it's going up by 20 percent. Most of your prospects don't believe you when you say that you actually lose trust. OK, really bad. OK, so even in B2B sales, I had to learn, you know, the first industry I sold in B2B, the average rep had a 12 to 14 month sales cycle, meaning it would take a year to close a deal with the company. I got that all the way down where my average deals were taking less than three months from 12 months. How? I knew how to build urgency, even in B2C, pretty easy. Hardly had anybody that said I wanted to think it over. There's a reason why. OK, so I'm going to show you on this five board now. If you were on the live right now, here's what I'm going to have you do before we start. I'm going to have you post. Go down to your phone. If you're on the live right now, I'm going to have you post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, I know you're on your phone. You go post hashtag live in the comments. I better see hundreds of hashtag lives, hundreds of hashtag lives. And if you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. So if you're on the live right now, post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. I'd seriously better see hundreds of hashtag lives. I mean, there's almost 400 of you just on Instagram. There's a uh, hundred, some of you on TikTok. There's here on StreamYard between YouTube, LinkedIn, and the Facebook group. There's like 300, some of you. Usually we have more. Where's everybody at? We usually have a thousand on these. We only got like 600 all together with all the plot. Well, now we got about 800, I guess, with IG, with everybody together. Okay. So if you're on the live, post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. Now, I'm also going to have each one of you go smash the heart button and I want you to smash the like button. So smash the heart button, smash the like, I, I better see a lot of smashed hearts, a lot of smash like, I mean, it's really nice in Scottsdale. It's like 65 degrees today. It was a really hot summer. I really want to go golf. So if you want me to spend the next 25, 30 minutes training you how to build urgency, I better see a lot of smashed hearts and a lot of smash likes. I, I mean, a ton. Okay, I'm just checking. All right. All right, IG, let me put you over here. Hopefully you guys can see this board decently. They're building out a new office space for me. This office space is so tiny to do all this content and crazy if you saw how tiny this office was. But here in about two months, my office is going to be about four times as big. It's going to be fun. You'll be able to see the, you'll be able to see the vibe board all the time. We got a 75 inch five board in the conference room, but in this in this office, we only have the 50 inch. Let me see if I can help you right there. OK, let's see if you can see that. You guys can see that over here in the Facebook group. Move that over here. That better for you. OK, now I'm going to give you a couple of generic versions first. 
And then what I did is I picked uh, 10 different industries. So maybe you're not aware, uh, seventh level, we train 161 different industries, including your industry watching me here. You would not be following me because our ads, our reels target specific industries. We train 161 industries, including yours. I don't care if you have the most unique gadget thing you're selling. We already train companies or reps in your space. Otherwise, you wouldn't know who we were. I can assure you of that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you some generic examples of consequence questions. And then I picked out 10 different industry examples from 10 different industries, half are business to consumer, half are business to business. So you can see the difference in what we're doing here. OK, all right. Now, consequence questions. Here's what they do. They help your prospect. OK, so let me show you this. Let's get this here. So they help your prospect think through and understand what the real consequences are if they don't do anything about solving their problems. What are the consequences? What are the ramifications if they stay in the status quo and it doesn't change? Now, we typically will ask consequence questions after we ask what are called solution awareness questions that get them to focus what the future will look like once their newfound problems are solved. Thank you for the cowboy hat on TikTok. I really enjoyed that. It's actually good, talented over there. So how do we get them to defend themselves? So after they see what the future, they feel what the future will look like when the problems are solved, we want to rip that away from them where they defend themselves on why they feel they have to change. Is that good for you? If your prospect defends themselves on why they feel they need to change, that's probably a good thing for you because that builds massive urgency. If you don't know how to do this yet, that means you are losing a ton of deals that our clients in your space make every single day because you don't understand how to do this. Now, this is just part of the puzzle. You're not going to be able to take what I show you here and quadruple your earnings without knowing everything else. But this will give you a leg up for sure. It will definitely get you on the right path. So that's why I'm going to do it for you today. All right. All right. Now, let's take a look at some generic versions. Now, these are purposely generic. What I'm about to show you, then I'm going to show you some different industry specific. What if you don't do anything about X, Y, Z and the situation gets even worse? Now, that's generic. If whatever you're selling, you're not going to say, what if you don't do anything about this problem? You're going to do what? Plug in the problem they said. OK, you're not going to say situation gets worse. You're going to plug in what their situation will be if they don't do anything, not just situation. That is a vague, generalized term. Can everybody see that? OK, right here. OK, how about this one? Have you thought about what would happen if you don't do anything about this? Once again, that's generic. Now, did you notice what tone I started using? I start off with a, I would say a skeptical tone and I end with a concerned tone. Now, when I show you the different examples, I'm going to show you why I'm doing that. Okay. There is a reason why when you're asking consequence questions, you have to ask them in a challenging tone at the beginning to raise their emotion. And then you're going to slow down your tone at the end to show that you're concerned for them. OK, and if you have not learned how to do that, you're not going to trigger different emotional drivers in the prospect's brain. OK, all right. So I'm going to show you this. Have you considered the ramifications if you don't do anything about this? Started off challenging, ended with concern. Write this down. If you're one of our clients, you already know this, but if you're not, write this down. Your tone is how your prospect interprets the intention behind your question. Your tone is how your prospect interprets the intentions behind everything you say and ask. That's how they interpret why you're asking them the question. So if they feel like I'm concerned for them, if the problem stays the same, they feel more trust. If they don't feel like I'm concerned for them, there's no trust. OK, I can shift my tone. It's one of the first things you learn when you hire like an advanced acting instructor or let's say you go to Hollywood and or you're in like some major uh, acting school. One of the first things they train you is how to use your facial expressions to change your tone 
to trigger different emotional drivers in your audience when they watch you on TV or in the movies. That's why your favorite actor and actress keeps you so engaged. That's why when you watch George Clooney or Julia Roberts or Tom Cruise or Scarlett Johansson or whoever your favorite actor or actress is, you don't even view them as the actor or actress in that film, do you? You view them as the character they're portraying. Do you know why? Because it sounds so natural. You can't even tell the difference. Yet everything they say, all their lines are what? 100% scripted. But do they sound scripted? No, they sound so natural. You don't even view them as the actor or actress. You view them as the character they're portraying. That's where I learned advanced tonality, not by a sales trainer. Most sales trainers would have no idea how to influence prospects by using their tone simply. You ever read a book where it says 93% of the sale is by your nonverbal communication? That's your body language and your tone. Has anybody trained you how to do that specifically? No. We will for sure. I'll give you little nibbles on the lives. You learn all that in the training courses as a client. All right. What are you going to do though if nothing changes and you keep using XYZ vendor and it gets worse the next three, six, or 12 months? That's a generic version. Okay. All right. Let's go to some industry specific examples here. All right. Uh, type in me if you sell SaaS. Type in me. This first example I'm going to give you is B2B for SaaS. Type in me. If you sell SaaS out of the 161 industries, I think SaaS is like the sixth or seventh largest that we train now. And let's say in this example that the you're you're working with associations and most of them have a manual process. They don't have a system to input their data. So they have to have people in their department manually do this two to three hours a day, which takes them away from actually doing the job they were hired, which causes the company to lose sometimes millions of dollars a year. And let's say you have some type of software that does that automatically where companies don't have to hire people to do that, saving them millions a year that they would have to pay somebody to manually do it. Okay. So I'm not asking this consequence question in the first five minutes of a conversation, right? Because I haven't built enough gap. I don't have enough trust or credibility. This is like three fourths to maybe almost towards the end, even if I'm selling B2C or B2B on that first conversation where I'm challenging them. I'm getting them to, once they've seen what their future looks like from my solution awareness questions, I'm going to rip that away from them and get them to defend themselves on why they feel they need to change. So pay attention to my tone. You're going to notice, let me show you again. I'll show you. I'll be nice to you. You're going to notice I'm going to start off with a challenging tone. And then I'm going to end it with a concern tone. Okay. Pay attention to what I'm doing here. If you want to sell more. What if you don't get the real system in place and you keep losing all that time with having to do it manually? You know, the judge gets fed up. I mean, what would happen to your job at that point? Let me do that even better. What if you don't get a real system in place and you keep losing all that time having to do it manually? The judges you're working with, they get fed up. I mean, how long is your boss going to give you at that point? Now, what did I do? I start off with a challenging tone. Why would I start that with a challenging tone? Because after my solution awareness questions, I have them on emotional high. They see and feel what their future looks like. I want to keep that emotion by talking a little bit faster here with a challenging tone. And notice at the end, what would happen to your job at that point? I lower my tone, I lower my voice, and I go into a concern tone. Why would I do that? Because remember, my tone is how the prospect interprets the intention behind the question I'm asking. So if the prospect feels I'm concerned for them, that if they don't do anything, the problems are going to stay the same, it causes them to emotionally open up more. It causes them to build a bigger gap. It causes them to trust me more. Trust is king in sales. People buy from people or companies who they trust can get them the best result. They do not simply buy because they like you. I hate to tell you this. You've heard that in you know, a lot of books. 
Dale Carnegie's great. He wrote that one book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, in 1936. We live in 2023. It's not 1936. People buy from people or companies who they trust can get them the best result. Am I right? You love grandma, but you're not going to buy from grandma if you know somebody else that you don't even really like, they can get you a much better result. Am I right? You love your, your neighbor who has the hardware store down the street. You love them, but you're buying from Amazon. You don't necessarily love to buy your tools from Amazon. You don't love Jeffrey Bezos, but you feel like Jeff Bezos and Amazon get you a better result. I could go on and on and on. If they like you, that's just a bonus, but it's not the reason why they buy from you. They buy from you because they trust you can get them the best result. Now, how do they trust you can get them the best result if you say the same things everybody else is saying that sells the same thing you are? You can't. You build trust by building a gap from where they are to where they want to be. You can only do that by two things. The questions you ask and how you ask the questions that get them to view you as more of an expert, more of a trusted authority in the market. Okay. I'll keep going here. Let's go to the next one here. All right. Let's go to this next industry specific example. Who in here says IULs like index universal life or annuities? Maybe you're an insurance salesperson or you sell annuities. Type in me if you sell annuities or IULs, huge industry we train in as well. Big one. All right. I want you to pay attention. It's pretty much the same. I want you to watch how I'm going to start with a challenging tone and end with a concern tone. Okay. But what will your retirement look like if you just stick with a mayor prizes plan and you keep having all these ups and downs in the market? I mean, how would you be able to retire by 63 at that point? So let's say the prospect tells you they want to retire by 63. You find out the problem they have is they're with some other, with some other company, or let's say they, they have uh, they're using Ameriprise because that's who I use for my financial investments. I love Ameriprise if you're on here. I don't think you're a client yet though. Maybe I should switch to Bank of America. Okay. But anyways, so anyways, in that example, they want to have more of a consistent retirement by putting it in a IUL to protect themselves. Okay. So notice what I'm doing. Okay. But what start off challenging. Okay. But what, I mean, what will your retirement look like if you just stick with XYZ's plan and they keep having all these ups and downs in the market? I mean, how would you be able to retire by 63? Slow down my tone into a concern tone. If they said they wanted to retire by 63, but the problem preventing them from doing that is what? The market is up and down. My IUL solves that. Okay. Now, here's another way I can do this. Okay. This is just a different example of a consequence question. And I'm primarily going to use a challenging tone here. Okay. But for you, why look at doing this now? I mean, why not, you know, push it down the road and just, I don't know, hope and pray the market will somehow stay consistent all the time. See what I just did there. Okay, but for you, why look at doing this now? I mean, why not push it down the road and just hope and pray the market will somehow stay consistent all the time? And I'm going to repeat back something negative that they know will not happen. See what I'm doing there? Okay. Well, the reason why I can't do that is because, and now they start telling themselves and telling you why they can't keep pushing it down the road. It's another way to prevent the, I want to think it over. I need to do more research. I need to keep looking around objections. Just another way to do that. Okay. Let's go to a completely different industry. Who in here sells dental implants? That's a huge industry. We train one company that does 700 some million a year in dental implants up in Salt Lake City, Utah. Nubia Smiles, great company. If you want implants, go to them. They're great. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Train a lot of big dental firms. Okay. As well. I mean, what happens if you don't do anything about this and you keep losing the bone density in your jaw and now you can't even get implants. Now, why would I get implants? Because I can't chew. Maybe I've lost a lot of teeth, right? I'm older. I've got dentures. They hurt. I'm in pain. 
I lack confidence because I'm missing teeth. I don't want to go out on dates or whatever. That's what I'm solving by this. What happens if you don't do anything about this and you keep losing the bone density in your jaw and now you can't even get implants? See how I did that? Start off with a challenging tone, raises their emotion, and then I end it with a concern tone. Oh, I don't know. Let's say the prospect comes back and says, oh, I, I don't know. I guess I'd have to figure something out. Well, I mean, do you, do you want to keep living with that pain in your mouth if you, I mean, if you, if you didn't have to? Notice how I shifted my tone. It was almost like a what? That was more of a confused, like, I can't believe you said that. That doesn't make any sense, but yet a concerned tone. Pay attention to what I did. If the prospect comes back and says, well, I don't know. I'd hope a miracle will happen. I don't know. I hope something happens. Something changes. Well, I mean, do you, do you want to keep living with all that pain in your mouth if you, I mean, if you didn't have to? Well, no, if I didn't have to. Well, whose choice is it? See, I'm back in that. Okay, that's another way to build more urgency. Okay, all right, let's go to a completely different industry now. Let's go to solar. Type in me if you sell solar. Solar is like the, it's one of the top five industries we train now, big industry. Did a bunch of uh, trainings with Power Solar. You know, I got 11,000 reps, love that company. I've got solar salespeople that make over 100 grand a month, tons of them in our training programs. Okay. Now, let's say in this example, you sell solar. Now, what are you solving? You're solving, typically, you're protecting them against rate hikes from the utility companies. It's not like the utility companies call and ask if they can raise your rates every year, right? So you're protecting them against rate hikes. You're locking in their rate. So in 10 years, the rate's still the same as it is now, whereas their neighbors, it might have doubled or tripled, right? And most of the time, you're lowering their bill. Depends on what area of the country you live in. So take a look at this. Now, this is a really long consequence question. So I'm going to show you what to do here. What would that dental phrase work similarly for surgeons? Depends. Uh, I think it's Javian. Uh, depends. Message me directly in our Facebook group. I'll show you some different examples because in our client training portals, we show you all the different tweaks you'll need based on what you sell. It doesn't matter. Okay. So if I'm selling solar and I have a long consequence question or anything, I have to use what is called verbal pacing. Okay. Now verbal pacing is where I pace out the question using verbal pauses that triggers the prospect to emotionally stay in tune with what I'm asking. It triggers the prospect's brain to internalize the question I'm asking. If I say it too fast, you don't give them enough time to internalize what you're asking and it goes in one ear out the other. And that's why you get surface level answers. That's exactly why. So I'm going to show you how to verbal pace this out. Okay. Okay. But what happens if you don't do anything about this? You know, Duke Energy keeps raising your rates every year like they have, but now you're 75, 80 years old, still having to pay the bill every month, but the bill's three times higher than what it is now. And now you're on social security. I mean, how, how would you guys be able to pay for it at that point? So see what I did? I started off with a challenging tone. Okay, but what happens if you don't do anything about this challenging tone? They keep raising your rates every year. And now you're 70, 75 years old, still having to pay your bill every month, but it's three times as high. And now you're on a limited income. I mean, with a bill three times as high, how would you how would you be able to pay for it at that point? Lower your tone into a concern tone. Okay. That triggers the prospect to what? That's how they interpret why you're asking the question that you're concerned for them. That if it doesn't change, how are they going to pay the bill? 25, 30 years from now when they're older on a limited income, when the bill is not going to go down, utility companies raise the rates every year. It's historical. It's like they don't lower them, right? So it causes him or her to think deeper about the consequences if they don't change now. 
that drives massive urgency for them to want to change and change with you. You know why? Because no other salesperson has ever got them to feel that way. They don't even know what happened, okay? Which is good because if you can't help them relive the pain of the problems or fear what the future pain will look and feel like if they don't do anything, they don't feel any need to what? To change. And if the prospect feels no need to change, there is no sale. You are hurting your prospects because you haven't learned yet how to ask the right questions for what you sell or how to even ask the questions with your tone. You are quite literally losing tons of deals you should be making and your prospects are suffering from it. You got to think differently if you want to make more money and help more people. Okay. All right. Let's keep going to a completely different industry now. Okay. Now let's say if they come back on solar and they say, well, I don't know. I just have to figure something out. I don't know. I'd have to figure something out then. Maybe my son can pay it. Well, I mean, do you want to have to keep being forced to pay the rate hikes if you, I mean, if you didn't have to, forced to pay the rate hikes? See, nobody likes to be forced. See, the words I'm using, see, I emphasize forced. I mean, do you want to keep being forced to pay the rate hikes if you, I mean, if you didn't have to? See what I'm doing there? Okay. Jeremy Miner, a good sales trainer. No, not really. Just probably average, maybe below average on IG. Okay. Now for this. Okay. But for you, why look at doing this now? Like why look at going solar now? Like why not push it down the road and keep paying the rate hikes like a lot of homeowners do who don't know anything about solar? Okay. But for you, why look at going solar now? Why not just push it down the road and keep paying the rate hikes like a lot of property owners do who don't know anything about solar. Well, I don't want to keep paying the rate hikes. See, I'm triggering emotional drivers in their brain by the tone I'm using and the questions I'm asking. Type in me if you want to learn that. Okay. The reason why you're losing tons of deals that our clients make in your industry is you haven't learned little basic things like I just showed you. What I just showed you was really basic, by the way, compared to where our clients learn. Okay. Let's go to a completely new industry. Let's say if you sold pest control door to door, big industry we train as well. What happens if you don't do anything about this and these brown recluses keep nesting and breeding in the home and then one of the kids end up getting bitten? Lowered my tone into concern tone. Okay. See what I did there? Same thing. Doesn't matter. I can show you every industry in the world. Let's say if you sold cars, type in me if you sold cars, train tons of dealerships are up three, 400% right now, where other dealerships are going out of business right now. Why are they up so much? Because we train them how to build a gap, how to use their tone to trigger the prospects to let their guard down. Okay. Let's say in this example, they have a used car. It keeps breaking down when they go to work and they're worried that if they keep missing work because their car breaks down, they're going to get fired. So I'm going to plug that into the consequence question. Okay. Okay. But what happens if you just keep the car and it keeps breaking down on your way to work? I mean, what would happen to your job at that point? Okay. But what happens if you just keep the car and it keeps breaking down when you're driving to work? I mean, what would happen to your job at that point? Concern tone, challenging tone, then concern tone. See what we did there? Okay, so if they're like, oh, I don't know what I would do, blah, blah, blah. I mean, well, are you are you willing to settle for that? I could ask that or I could say, I mean, do you want to keep putting yourself in that situation if you, I mean, if you didn't have to? See, I can ask it two different ways there. Please be sure to run up those likes for our guy, Jeremy. Uh, Manny from YouTube. Love you. Love you, dude. That's awesome. Good for you, man. Okay, let's say if you sold cybersecurity. Okay, this is a big industry we train as well. Train some huge companies. Lots of reps making tons of money in cybersecurity now. After we train them, not before. All right, so let's say that you're selling to big banks. And in this example, they're having issues with their false positive rates, and it's causing them to reject good customers. And let's say it's causing that bank tens of millions of dollars a month because they're rejecting good customers because of their false positive rates. If you're in cybersecurity, you know what I mean by that. Okay. Okay. So if you keep, if you just stay with XYZ vendor, what are the consequences if you don't do anything about your false positive rates and you continue to reject really good customers? 
So if you continue to use XYZ vendor, what are the consequences if you don't do anything about your false positive rates and then you continue to be rejecting the good customers? Concern tone, okay? If a negative response, I mean, do you, do you want that to keep happening if you, if you didn't have to? It's another way to do it. Let me go to a completely different industry. Let's say if you're a marriage therapist, I wanted to show you something completely different. Let's say if you're a marriage therapist or a psychologist, let's say, or you, let's say you sell a, a program that teaches people how to get better at their marriage, how to stay, how to make their marriage great again, all the political slogans, all right? Okay, but what if you don't do anything about this and you keep having these issues with George where you keep arguing and feeling resentment another three, six, 12 months. I mean, what would happen to your marriage at that point? What if you don't do anything about this? You keep having these issues with your husband and you guys keep arguing and you feel that resentment and he keeps going on three, six, 12 months from now. I mean, what would happen to your marriage at that point? Oh my gosh, I don't even want to think about that. Well, what happens to your marriage if you don't do anything? See, I could even skip all that and just ask this question right here. I could even make it smaller. What happens to your marriage if you don't do anything? What happens to your marriage if you don't learn how to overcome this resentment? Okay, I can just ask that simple question. Okay, or I could do it this way. This is a completely different way. Okay, but for you, why look at going through therapy now? I mean, why not push it down the road like a lot of couples do who end up getting divorced? Well, the reason why I don't want to get divorced is because, of, see how they push? See, I'm almost pushing them away a little bit to get them to what? Pull me back in. Alarm system takeover. Didn't write that down, but it's one of the biggest industries you're trained on IG. That was one of the four industries I sold in. I was in summer programs. I had almost 400 installs every three months summer. I don't even know if that's still a record. It was back in the day, 20 years ago. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, let's see here. Let's go to a completely different industry. Okay, let's say you sell mortgage protection insurance or life insurance. I think that's that's either the first or second largest industry we train. It always fluctuates between real estate and life insurance. Okay. So what if you don't do anything about this? You end up passing away, I mean, years before you thought you would. I mean, how would Cindy end up paying for the house and all the expenses without your income? Oh, I'm not sure, blah, blah. I mean, do you want Cindy to have to pay for all that if you, I mean, if you didn't have to? See what I did there? Now, what did I do there? Okay, notice I started off with a challenging tone, yet I ended with a concern tone. Why would I end with a concerned tone? Did you already do one for car sales? Yes. You have to go back and watch the recorded version. Okay. This is for life insurance. So what if you don't do anything about this? You end up passing away years before you thought you would. I mean, how would she be able to pay for the house and all the expenses without your income? Oh, there's no way she, I mean, do you want her to have to try to figure all that out? If you, I mean, if you didn't have to, well, no, if I didn't have to. See, I'm triggering the prospect to defend themselves on why they feel they have to change. How about window remodeling sales? One of the biggest industries we train is home improvement. It's the, I wouldn't say the fifth or sixth largest industry. Windows would be in that. Did I write one down here? I'm not sure. I don't know if I did. Let's see. Huge industry we train though. Okay, let's say if you sold home improvement and you sold pools. Oh, this is in purple. You guys aren't going to be able to see it here on the screen. All right. So what happens if you don't end up putting the pool in and the key, the kids keep having to go all the way down to the YMCA and you miss out on all those memories? So let's say if they're a grandparent and they're wanting to put in a huge pool, $150,000 pool in their backyard because they want their grandkids to come over more. Their house is boring. They want them to come over to make more memories. But because they don't have a pool and they live in Florida, for example, they just go off to the YMCA and they hardly ever see their grandkids. So they're trying to solve an emotional need. What happens if you don't end up putting a pool back here and the kids keep going all the way down to the YMCA and you guys miss out 
on all those memories. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. What, what do you, I mean, do you want to miss out on those memories if you, I mean, if you didn't have to? Well, no, if I didn't have to. All right. Okay, let's go to the next one here. Let's see what we got here. Oh, oh, CRMs, B2B. Who sells in the CRM space? There you go. Maybe you sell for Salesforce or HubSpot or Close.io or somebody. I don't know. High level, there's a billion of these now. It's a big industry we're training as well. Okay, but on the flip side, what happens if you don't do anything about this? Your sales keep your salespeople keep using these spreadsheets. And they keep losing these 12 to 15 deals every week for another three, six, 12 months. I mean, how long is your boss going to let you keep doing that? If I'm talking to a sales manager, a VP of sales of a small company. Okay. Now let's say if they're like, oh no, I really need to make a change. Like we have to do something. Here's a way to kind of push them back a little bit. So they pull you in much more. I want you to see this. I mean, you certainly sound motivated, but what are the ramifications for you personally if things just stay the same? I mean, you certainly sound motivated, but what are the consequences for you personally if this doesn't change? See what I'm doing? I mean, you certainly sound motivated. See what I'm doing? I mean, you certainly sound motivated, but what are the consequences for you personally if this doesn't get better? Okay, so it's important for you to do something then. That's a probing statement. All right, makes sense? All right. Did that help you? I give you I give you a little nibble over there, a little bit of uh, what do they call it? A little golden nugget. Now in the chats, I'll do this one last thing before we end the training today. We will go live tomorrow in the Facebook group. Every Wednesday we go live only in the Facebook group, not on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, but on uh, we'll cover merchant services. Terry, I didn't put it on this one. Merchant services is one of the top twenty five industries we train. If you're a client, when you log into the portals back there, you'll see tons of examples from that space. And we teach you on the group training calls how to make it industry specific for what you sell. OK. All right. Campers, Luxury Adams, same thing, Kyle. All, all the same stuff. Every Everybody asks me, do you train my industry? Yes. According to Forbes, there's only 163 industries in the world. Did you know that? Forbes magazine, 163 industries. We train 161 of those. So you have about a 1% a chance we don't train yours. The only two industries we do not train is salt mining. So if you sell salt mining, we don't know if we train, we don't train any companies. We might have some individual salespeople in that space in our basic programs. We just don't know. We don't have the data on our basic programs. We probably do. And there's one other weird industry, like some type of underwater basket weaving or something. I don't, I'm joking on, the, on that one. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we train your industry. So everybody asks me, well, do you, you train windows? Do you train cars? Do you train mortgages? Do, do, you, do you train this? Do you tra yes. When I say we train every industry, that means we train every industry. Now, there are subsets to those 161 industries, like home improvement. I'll give you an example. Home improvement, that could mean siding. That could mean carpet. That could mean tile. That could mean cabinet makeovers. That could be countertops. That could be siding. Could be windows. Could be doors. Could be decks. See, there's like 30 different things just in the home improvement industry. If it's home services, it could be HVAC, could be roofing, could be many different things, right? Landscaping, a lot of different things, right? So if it's insurance, could be health insurance, auto insurance, home insurance, life insurance, mortgage protection, final expense, lots of different categories in those industries. We're in all of those. Now, in the chat, I want you to type in, in your chat real quick. So if you're on Instagram or if you're on TikTok or YouTube or the Facebook group, or let's say you're you're on LinkedIn or, or wherever you're at in the chat, type in how much more money you want to make on a monthly basis once you acquire the right skills. Because you got to acquire the right skills to make more money, right? Are you just going to work double the hours? I mean, you already work eight to 10 hours a day. Are you going to work 16 to 20 hours a day? I guess you can't. I don't know how long you're going to last, though. I wouldn't want to do that. Sounds hard. So in the chat, I want you to type in how much more money you feel you can make once you acquire the right skills to make that. In the chat, type in how much that is for you. 
Okay. Now, if you're a business owner, that's probably going to be a lot different than you're an individual salespeople. Uh, 30,000 a month, 20,000 a month, 30,000 a month, 20,000 a month, 30,000 a month. Well, a lot of you guys are getting an extra 10 grand a month, 12 grand a month, seven grand a month, five grand more a month, uh, 10,000 more a month, TikTok, 10,000, 30,000. Okay. A hundred thousand more a month. I love that. Maybe they're a business owner. Uh, Logan, 33 extra, uh, 1 million, 42, 10 grand, 10,000. Yeah. Type in how much more money you feel you should be making on a monthly basis if you had the right sales ability to do that. Right. Cause you're not getting all, get all the good leads. Do you think I made in my 17 and a half year sales career before I retired, before I started seventh level, as a rep like you, do you think I made a bit under $33 million in commissions by getting all the good leads? Was that my secret? Oh, just give Jeremy all the good leads. He'll make all the money. Did you know the four industries I was in where I was making multiple seven figures a year in commissions? The average in those four industries, the average rep made less than 55,000 a year. How was I making that almost on a weekly basis in commissions talking to the same type of prospects? How? Simply, I had acquired a much more advanced sales ability than anybody else had acquired. Now, type in me if you want to acquire that type of sales ability where you can actually make the money you typed in the chat. Because you have two choices. You can dream about making that much money. Or you can acquire the skill sets necessary to make that money. Which one is going to get you there? Dreaming about it? Hoping and praying that one day it's going to magically work out? Or having the sales ability, acquiring the sales ability to do that? Because were you born out of your mother's womb with advanced questioning skills? Were you? Were you born out of your mother's womb with advanced questioning skills? Anybody? No. Were you born out of your mother's womb with advanced tonality skills? No. Were you born out of your mother's womb with advanced objection handling and advanced objection prevention skills? No. So what does that mean? You have to learn those skills. You have to acquire those skills. Is a $20 book on sales going to train you all that? We have a Wall Street Journal and a Barnes & Noble and Amazon bestseller. And I will tell you, this book is not going to give you what is necessary for you to make what you just posted in that chat. You know why? Because it's a book. You're going to remember 3% of this within 30 days just the way your brain works. Because can you learn advanced tonality and body language by reading a book? No, because you're reading the words. And that's where 93% of the sales made is by your nonverbal communication. This will give you some good ideas. You'll make a few more sales. You're not going to triple your income, though. I, I, if anybody tells you that from a book, they're crazy. So what do you need to do to acquire that skill level? What's your first step? Or your first step, if you actually want to make the money that you plugged in here, rather than dreaming about it, rather than just talking about it, because talk is what? Talk doesn't get you anywhere. You want results, you simply acquire the ability to get those results, correct? So if you want those results, message me directly right now. So if you're on Instagram or TikTok or LinkedIn, or the Facebook group sales revolution or my Facebook or the Facebook business page, message me directly right now. Just send me a DM. Just message me right now. If you're on YouTube, you won't be able to message me directly right now. They don't, the platform doesn't do that there. You'll have to join our Facebook group sales revolution pro sales revolution pro. It's right on that purple banner underneath me here on Streamyard, And we let you join that for free. There's about a hundred thousand salespeople in there. Many of them from your industry. When you get in there, just message me in the Facebook group. Now there's, I mean, geez, just here in the Facebook group and YouTube alone, there's 200 some people on here. On IG, there's still 150 of you on here 35 minutes later. 
And on TikTok, there's still 100 some of you on here. So I'll probably have 30% of you message me. I'm not going to be able to message, you know, 180 of you back in the next hour. So it'll be either me, myself, or someone on my social media team that will message you back different details if you want to learn how to acquire the skills so you can actually make the money you typed in. Because what's the certain, what's the almost certain reality for you of you making the money you typed in if you keep selling the same way you are now? You're going to do what? Make the same money you are now. If you keep asking the your same questions you've been asking, if you don't understand how to use your tone to get your prospects to let their guard down, if you don't understand how to prevent most of the objections you lose deals from now, what happens? Nothing. You stay at the same income forever. Whose choice is that? So if you want to change that, message me directly right now. Now, if you can't figure out how to message me in the Facebook group or LinkedIn or Instagram or TikTok or whatever, in the comments, just post hashtag NEPQ. Just write in hashtag NEPQ and someone I'm a team will message details. Now, when they message you details, can you do yourself a favor? Can you? Can you can you can you let your guard down? Can you can you let go of your ego that Maybe you don't know everything there is to know about selling unless you made more than me in your sales career. If you did, for sure, by all means, tell me what I don't know. But if you didn't, you didn't make multiple seven figures a year in commissions as a W-2 rep or 1099 rep working for companies, maybe, just maybe, you still can learn more. Going out on a limb. So when they ask you questions about your industry and and what you feel like you're saying or asking that's causing a lot of your prospects that have problems that your solution solves to not buy from you, are you going to open up and tell them the truth? Or are you going to guard yourself, be defensive, take your ego up? You know everything there is to know. Because what good is that going to do for you? Not much. You'll just stay in the same income you're at now. Same skill level, right? So if you want to acquire those skills, just be open to uh, us when we message you and tell us the truth of what's really going on. And once we understand your income, what you're making now as an individual salesperson compared to what you want to make and what industry you're in, that will tell our account managers because they'll even let you book with an account manager to go over. I think we have like 34, 35 different sales training programs now. We don't just have one with one price. So once we understand what your current sales income is compared to where you want that to be and kind of what skill sets you're lacking that's preventing you from getting there. The account manager will recommend different training programs for you to go through that gives you the highest and the quickest ROI possible. Okay. A lot of our clients in your industry say they make their money back in the first week from increased sales. That's a good thing for you, probably. So if you want to acquire those skills, message me directly right now. If you're on YouTube, you'll have to join the Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. If you're on IG, TikTok, LinkedIn, the Facebook group, Facebook business page, just message me directly in the, in the DMs and we'll get back to you on that. Okay. Now we will be going live tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we interview a client from a completely different industry every week in the Facebook group. So you'll have to join the Facebook group if you want to see that. Typically, we share their scripts. Most of them are from our Advanced Inner Circle program. We share their scripts. <coughs> we answer your questions. Uh, any question you ask, we answer it in that live. That's about a 45-minute live that we typically do. Sometimes we'll go an hour. And our clients give you really good golden nuggets that will help you sell more. So if you're on IG or TikTok or LinkedIn or YouTube, and you want to be on that Facebook Live tomorrow where you can hear it or even hear the recording of it, uh, just go to salesrevolution.pro, salesrevolution.pro, salesrevolution.pro. I'm going to say it one more time. That's it. Don't ask me again. Salesrevolution.pro. Or you can just go to Facebook and type in Sales Revolution. It'll show you where to join the Facebook group. There's almost 100,000 salespeople and entrepreneurs in there from your industry as well. 
And right when you join, uh, set your notifications on your phone that they that uh, Facebook notifies you when I go live. Otherwise, because there's so many people in there, more than likely you won't get notified. You got a 2% chance. So uh, you have to set your notifications on uh, your phone that it'll tell you Jeremy Miner's going live every time I go live in the Facebook group. And I hope you enjoy that interview tomorrow. I'm going to be interviewing a guy, a client that was making about four to 5000 a month a year ago, who now averages well over 35000 a month in commission selling the exact same thing. How did he do that? Well, we're going to show you. So you can take some of the stuff he's been trained in our advanced inner circle and apply it to what you sell so you can sell more as well. Okay, I got to get out of here. Message me directly wherever you're at. Love you guys. See you soon.